They're probably using cheap ingredients. Jeff taught me a long time ago. He was razzing me for just using uh, sugar off the shelf. Well, there is a big difference between uh, Publix supermarket sugar and pure cane domino sugar. And that's true of all ingredients. You can find uh, a cheaper brand than Taster's Choice for the coffee, but it won't taste the same. It won't work as well. It's all in the ingredients. I mean, you can go out and buy a Wolf or a Blodgett oven, uh, the best on the market, and, and still make lousy dinners. You know, it's, 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 uh, it's, not the, it's not the oven, it's the ingredients. It's always the ingredients. And it's usually that they're trying to economize. And Jeff will tell you, it doesn't matter what it costs you to make the ice cream because you're going to have so many long lines and you can charge what you need to charge that it's going to come out great. The average price across the country right now is uh, $5 for six ounces. We took up the normal size of a single scoop from four to six. And uh, the price has gone from, uh, it was 220, 225, then it got to 275, 350. Uh, now it's five dollars average across the country. And people are happy to pay for it because it's a treat. It's, it's a unique experience. We're going out to get ice cream. It's not the same as bringing home a half gallon of Briars. So it's, it's So to answer your question, it's not the Indians, it's the arrows. Okay. But uh, so it has nothing to do with like the percentage of dairy mix or anything like that. No. no. Oh, okay. I'm just curious. I knew it wasn't your machine. I knew. It wasn't. <laughs> well, you've tasted enough different ice creams yeah. to see the. And that's why they take my class yeah. so that they can make the world's best ice cream. Mm -hmm. Yes, and buy your book. Well, with the formulas. <laughs> Anybody else? Then we're going to get uh, on to your next flavor. Okay, the next flavor. Old-fashioned cherry vanilla. For some crazy reason, I've been in the business for 14, 15 years, and I never made cherry vanilla ice cream. And the other day, or last week, one of my friends was talking to me, and growing up, okay. cherry vanilla was one of the big three ice creams. Uh, everybody had it, everybody wanted it, and it was good. So we'll make old-fashioned cherry vanilla. Uh, simple ice cream, once again, they're all simple. They're all simple, right? I mean, yeah, in, the, in the class, Dylan, how many ingredients did we use? Three ingredients, most, you know? Okay, so this one will be a full bladder. We're gonna make a full batch of this. Uh, so we'll use one full bladder. So we'll pour this in. My friend George estimated that I've made 65,000 gallons of ice cream. It's uh, <laughs> a lot of ice cream. That's why I'm always on a diet. Let's see, 65,000 gallons and five dollars a scoop. That's why you're driving a Bentley. <laughs> if what you think about is money when you get into the business, you're on the wrong track. <laughs> The money in this business is like a puppy dog. Feed it well, handle it well, it'll always follow you. Very profound. Yeah, did you say you have this cast in stone somewhere? Yes. <laughs> All right, we'll add a little vanilla also. And you'll see it's not the only vanilla we're going to add. Because this is labeled old-fashioned cherry vanilla, I thought we would add a little more vanilla flavoring to it. So I have a bottle of Tarani vanilla, which is very good stuff. And we'll throw that in. The whole bottle? The whole bottle. <laughs> now for the cherries. Uh, I bought a gallon of maraschino cherries and they are here, sans the jar, and uh, they're maraschino cherries. 
<laughs> fake color and all. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll give them a slight grind because we want some small pieces. When you, when you use the Ninja or, or whatever blend you use and you grind stuff, the goal is that it will touch all the ice cream and you'll get more flavor of that into that. Uh, if I just put these in whole, the cherry flavor would only be when you bit a cherry. So we want to make sure that you have a piece of cherry in everything. Got it? So we'll add a bunch of these in here. We'll take a little cherry syrup. I use Hartley's. <coughs> and then we'll give it a quick mix. That should do. Uh, I'm not going to start it yet because we have one more thing to add after this. So we'll add these in there. And remember, the best mix master in the whole world is not the KitchenAid on your counter. It's this. So whenever you have to mix stuff, this does a great job. my back. Very quiet. We're all hungry. Yeah. I thought the sugar rush would be kicking in by now. Okay. Now we can start it up. And of course, what are we going to do now? Taste it. Taste it. In case we think it needs something. That's old fashioned cherry vanilla. We'll start the compressor and then a little bit when it starts to get thicker in there, we'll add some whole cherries because as you know when you eat ice cream and you come across a whole ooh I got a cherry in that one <laughs> so the compressor just clicked on the water is coming out so we're okay to go any questions what is the no? dairy mix cost per case now what does it cost per case? I'll let you ask him during the break because this video will be on for years and the price has changed. So he'll tell you during the break. How was that? I did that good, right? That was smooth. That was very smooth. Very smooth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where do you live? Wisconsin. Well, that's the dairy state, of course. There's tons of ice cream places in Wisconsin. As a matter of fact, in my first store, we were so busy that I couldn't keep up. Do we have I was making three to four hundred gallons a week, and I couldn't keep up. So I found a place in Wisconsin, Two, three, and four. I was the first shop they actually delivered to from Wisconsin. It's called the Chocolate Shop. You know their ice cream. Their ice cream is fantastic. And after speaking with them, uh, they agreed that I would open up this area for them in the south. Uh, but they're great ice cream. So are you the only shop? Yes. Yeah. 
was, I sold it. It's very good. It's famous. And you know, the class ice cream, they'll make the same ice cream. These guys are from Honolulu. They came to the class. And when they go back and open up, they'll make the same great ice cream. And it'll be better than everyone else in the area. A uh, quick show of hands. How many of you are going into the Italian ice business? Okay, one. How about uh, ice cream? Okay, so it's mostly an ice cream crowd today. Um, back when uh, uh, COVID first hit in February of 2020 and they were shutting down uh, all businesses all over the country, um, I wrote a few articles uh, to try to save uh, my uh, over 39,000 customers worldwide, keep them open. <clears throat> they couldn't have the store open, but they could still run stuff out to your car. So social media took over and uh, place, people are placing their orders. And what I got them into was pint sales. Pint sales have always been around, but they were ignored. Um, what we had people doing was the store owner could go into his own store and we would uh, pre-fill uh, pints at the machine and then we would put them in a freezer. Once you fill that pint and you do the best you can uh, of filling it, you put the cap on it and then a little old timer secret, and I qualify as an old timer, you turn it upside down in the freezer. So it freezes with the product falling to the bottom. So when the customer opens up the container, you've opened up a, uh, a container of uh, ice cream and it's perfectly smooth to the top. That's because even the biggest companies in the world turn their pints upside down. Uh, pints are sold by weight, so if we happen to miss scoop, uh, we've got it factored in there that if there's a little air bubble in here, as they scoop into it, that disappears. But you turn your pints upside down. So here's what happened with pints. Uh, people wanted to get out. They wanted to get out of the, ho out of the house. They were desperate to get out of the house as the COVID was uh, raging. And so they would uh, text in an order to your ice cream parlor and uh, order up uh, some pints and, and come out uh, to your car, hand you the pints, and off you drove. Um, that, was, that was a lot of fun. You'd get the whole, people, the whole family in the car, just like we do to go out to an ice cream parlor, except we were just going out to sit in the parking lot. And uh, it has uh, evolved uh, into, uh, when I do an ice cream parlor, I always have this section over here, the person is standing here, what would you like? I'd like a mint chip. What would you like? I'd like a cherry vanilla. Uh, also, over here, we have another table, and all it says is a little sign that says, take out pints. And, uh, and right next to it is either a chest freezer, uh, like this one back here, that they can reach in and grab their pint, or maybe it's a vertical, like a true freezer cabinet where they can see the different pints. Uh, Culver's Custard uses that, that version. And uh, the point is, <clears throat> Paula, my wife, our office manager, has called me up and said, hey, the Thompsons are coming for dinner. Make sure you stop at Thompson's Old Fashioned Ice Cream and pick up a couple of pints of ice cream. Well, I've got two golden retrievers, and it's 90 degrees out. I can't go to the public supermarket because I can't leave the dogs in the car. I can't leave the dogs in the car with the air conditioning running because someone will steal the car and the dogs. But I can come up to your place because I know you have just a little takeout stand that, that just says take out pints. And here's, so I can run in, engine running, dogs in the car. I know I'm going to be out in 40 seconds. How do I know that? Because there's nobody standing over here. There's no one here to serve me. The server over here sees me come in and I grab my two pints <clears throat> And the server says, excuse me a minute, I'll be right with you. Uh, yes, can I help you? Yeah, I want these two pints. Fine, do you want a bag? No. Uh, 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 do you, uh, you want, we'll pay by credit card, slide your card. I slide my card, I've got my two pints, and I run back to the car. I have frozen these pints down to 10 below in a chest freezer, 25 below zero in our hardening cabinet. And so I know they're gonna make it all the way home uh, without melting. So I was able to run in, grab my two pints, and get back out to the car to Sammy and Stella, the Golden Retrievers, in 40 seconds. And as a man, my job is done. 
You know, if I have to go to Publix, I'm the one who's going to get behind the little old lady who's counting out 97 cents in change from her pocket purse. And you're going to be there for 10 minutes. Now, what about over here? Uh, if it was 10 years ago or five years ago or just before the COVID, the person in line would say, hey, that guy got in front of me. That's not fair. Nowadays, the person who here who got interrupted says, wow, did you see that? Look, he's got two Goldens on, in his SUV on the parking lot. He ran in, paid for him. He was gone in 40 seconds. I could do that next Tuesday when the Thompsons are coming over to play bridge. So this person isn't angry anymore. They've just discovered you've got pints for sale. That's great. So this is a huge business. You'll always buy two pints. I can't come home with a pint of mint chip, my favorite flavor, and say, hey, Paula, look what I bought for me. And she's going, where's my coconuts? <laughs> oh, OK, yeah. So I don't care what it costs. We're getting eight, nine, ten dollars $10 a pint. And I'm always going to buy two because I want uh, one for me and uh, a flavor for Paula. So uh, there's a $20 sale right now, and nobody ever blinks. Uh, you know, you, once in a while you hear someone complain that an ice cream cone costs $5, but they'll never complain about the pints. And then those of you who are of the, uh, uh, or if, if you're not uh, like me, um, this pint never gets home without being open. And just so you know, ladies, this is what your husband is doing. As we're driving home, it may be rock solid, but it can't stand up to teeth. So we're opening it up. We're taking a bite or two out, out of the pint of ice cream. And then the second we get home, because we're not really as stupid as we look, as soon as we get home, we grab a spoon and we smooth it over where it was. We're still not as stupid as you think, because now there's an indent. So with that spoon, with our wife watching from across the kitchen, we gouge into it and take a big bite out of it. Hey, don't eat that. That's for the Thompsons when they come for dinner. So we've had ice cream on the way home without a spoon. We've uh, smoothed over the, uh, the, uh, the evidence, and nobody knows the difference except now. I'm sorry, but your wife does know. But pint sales are literally through the roof. I've got uh, people calling up who are doing only pint sales out of a a very small store. Still good? Timing wise? I don't know, not me. <laughs> no, I mean timing wise. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, the other thing I'm doing differently is I used to do Did stores that, that were 1,700, 2,000 square feet. We had big seating areas, we had 40 flavors. Um, people would come in and hang out. Uh, the rents have gotten too expensive for that, number one. Uh, a large part of my market is. Uh, customers under 40 years old, and quite frankly, they don't have the credit line of credit that someone in their 50s or 60s might have developed over the years. So they're on a tight budget, and so we're on a tight budget. I sell them uh, the CB350. I advise them to go to Home Depot and buy a couple of chest freezers and, and look for a 750, 900 square foot store. As one lady said, do you know the difference, Steve, between 2,000 square feet and 750 square feet? And the answer, she said, was a whole lot of mopping. So if you don't have to mop 2,000 square feet of store, you only have 750, it's a lot easier. 750, no matter what the rent is, it's going to be a lot less than 2,000. So uh, we only do about 12 flavors, <clears throat> 10 of uh, ice cream and two of uh, vegan dairy-free. Maybe I'll add Italian ice later on, or the opposite. I do Italian ices and add ice cream later. Uh, but I'm doing it in a very tight store. We're not doing toppings. We're not doing milkshakes. We're not doing banana splits. Just the 12 flavors, usually into a cup, because it's, uh, it's, more, it's six ounces instead of four. And you're doing a huge business with a low overhead. And we can do it for under $50,000, uh, pretty well under $50,000. So that's, that's the future of ice cream parlors. And with social media, without social media, we had to be the best location, the best parking, on the best street in the best town. Now with social media, my wife and I, <clears throat> when we go out to dinner, we don't go to some fancy name place. We also don't go to McDonald's. We're looking for nice, fresh food. And someone on social media uh, said, oh, here's this little place. It's only got 25 tables, but the chef changes the menu uh, every week. Well, that's, that's a great place for us. 
Uh, so uh, we are going to a place like that. And people, if you have a small ice cream parlor and it's down that alley and turn left and ask for Frankie, uh, we'll do it. And so that has really opened up the ability to get into the frozen dessert business. All yours. All Jeff. All Jeff. Okay, we're almost ready. Mm. But not quite. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of sugar in this one, so it takes longer. If anybody would like to see the inside of the, the white book, not Jeff's, but the Emory Thompson recipe book, you can go see uh, Kendall in the front office and she'll let you finger through it and just kind of take a peek at it uh, if you want to do that before you purchased it. And how much is it? It's 75 uh, and then Jeff's is? Uh, 40 today. Oh, okay. <laughs> So you can buy two of Nobody Jeff's and, and, uh, and uh, get one to a friend. They're 60. Most of the time in this class, they're 50. But I only brought four with me, so they're 40. <laughs> Come on, some questions? Anybody? When you make the pints for your store, if you pre-make them and have them in a freezer, do you have to have them? Like, they have to be labeled, right? Do they have to be labeled with the ingredients that are on them? If you sell over a certain amount, you have to put the ingredients list on. Okay, is there anything else? You don't have to have like a special license to sell them? No, because it's a retail sale. You walk in and you buy an ice cream cone, we don't come with labeling sure. on it. So if you buy a pint, it doesn't have to come with it. If you decide to branch out, which I think you should, and supply your pints to a, a local deli or a local bodega, uh, and you send them, you deliver them 16, 20 pints a day, I mean a week, uh, and they're selling it, making a profit too then you need some additional labeling. You need a wholesale license because you delivered it. And that's easy. You already have a retail license. The wholesale is just clicking off a few more boxes. And I would, if it has anything to do with nuts of any kind, not just peanuts, but tree nuts even, uh, I would be sure to at least put that on there. Or if you think there's a possibility, you could put, you know, cross-contamination possible, however you want to word it, you know, because it's it, tree nuts are a common thing, you know, like my daughter has an allergy to walnuts. We have a lady here who a, has an allergy to pistachios. So, I mean, it can vary from, from person to person. We're a very litigious society, you know, we'll, we'll sue for anything. So another yep. way to look at it is you have so many different varieties of ice cream, dairy-free Italian ices that don't have nuts in it. Maybe you just run your whole business without any nuts in it at all and then you can advertise that uh, this is made in a, a nut-free factory. That might be a safer way to go. I love peanut butter ice cream, but I don't want to risk nowadays uh, giving peanut butter to a child who might go into anaphylactic shock. I you know, just, just don't want to see it happen. Just maybe leave it off the menu. Stick to fruit flavors and cookies. There's a lot you can do with cookies. They're great. Ready? Oh, if you are. It's up to you. Yes. Um, I was just wondering. Can you speak up a little? Oh, yeah. I was just wondering, how would you like, you know, like for like filling pints and stuff, is there anything you like you normally do for like filling you really easy without like spilling and doing all that? Or? Uh, He's ready, so save Jeff's that. gonna go ahead with his and then go we'll ahead. talk about yeah, it. You can answer. Oh, okay. Well, like I said, I fill it at the machine. All I do is use my infinite overrun control to slow it down and fill it. Um, it can be a little bit messy, you're right. So you fill about 10 or 15 of them, put them on top of the machine, and then when you're finished, you go back with a clean cloth and wipe it and put the lid on it, turn them upside down. Uh, TD Sawville, otherwise known as Sawville, S-A-W-V-E-L, automation, also makes a great machine where you make, you've got a bigger Emory Thompson, you pour the ice cream into the Sawville funnel, and then you have a, a, a foot pedal, which is a little piston pump, a little electric motor. And you put a cup under, boom, fills it perfectly. Fill another one, fill another one. That's about $8,000, $7,000, And you'll get to that point later when you're just doing so many pints. So you can see this is a beautiful color that Jeff has here. I'm looking forward to this. Cherry. 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 
<laughs> See how fast that comes out of the machine? That's what we're trying to do. We're all about speed and efficiency. I don't want to stand here for five minutes trying to get the ice cream out of the machine. Oi. Oi? Yeah, see, licking the fingers would be so easy right now. Oh, that's good, Jeff. You like that? Oh, that's delicious. You'd say that anyway. No, I wouldn't. I, I didn't say it about the ranch dressing, the Hidden Valley <laughs> Ranch dressing ice cream. We didn't say about it, uh, what was it, saffron ice cream. <laughs> One other quick little trick. Um, let's say this table over here is your dipping cabinet. Uh, that dipping cabinet is wrapped in refrigeration lines all the way around. So if uh, one little trick, you, you can go in an ice cream parlor and if you see the server struggling with one ice cream and easy to scoop the other, they don't know this trick. That box is all refrigeration all the way around, but the four corners, one, two, three, four, those four corners get more refrigeration onto this tub over here in the corner. It's being hit by two sides of refrigeration. Over here, it's only being hit by one side of refrigeration. So if this was my store, my vanilla would be here, and I've got it set for six degrees Fahrenheit. This product, with all the extra sugar that he poured in in the form of the syrup, I'm gonna put in the corner where it's gonna get more refrigeration. The overall box is six degrees Fahrenheit, but it's not even. Warmer, it's six here, and colder over here. Um, so that's, that's a good trick to know. So alcohol on the outside? Alcohol on the outside, absolutely, because it's going to, and that way everything scoops uh, evenly, and you're not struggling with it. Yeah, if they're struggling with it, they don't know that trick. Jeff and I disagree on a lot of things. Uh, Christy was telling me this morning, that's why people tune in. They like to see us, you know, what would you call us? Jack Lemon and Walter Mathall. <laughs> and I think that may be true over the years. Um, Jeff says, what you taste is what you get. Uh, I know for an absolute fact, because I, I deal in facts, that if you have this same ice cream tomorrow after it's been through the hardening phase and the hardener, good. the flavor will come out even stronger. It blooms. It, if you taste my vanilla straight out of the machine, you go, ah, it's good, he didn't put enough in. Taste it tomorrow, it'll be stronger. Jeff says no. Want my reasoning? Yes. Okay, he's wrong 100%, and that's a fact. Because, just let's take this to the extreme. Suppose you had a popsicle, a cherry popsicle, an ice cherry popsicle, and you take it out of the freezer and eat it. Will you get more cherry flavor then, or when it's first made and it's soft? Okay, it doesn't apply to Italian ices. There's no dairy. It's dairy that blooms. It's not uh, When you were water. young and you got a bowl of ice cream and you took your spoon, didn't you go around the edges where it was softer because it was creamier and more flavorful? I have a picture of you when you were two, and I saw you take that ice cream and smear it up against your face. <laughs> Do you know why babies do that? Because when they're born, they're going to be nursing, uh, most likely. And all the receptors around here are all very heightened. That's why small children take uh, food and smear it up against their face. As they get older, these sensors calm down. So when you see a baby, I mean, there's no such thing as a baby picture without eating ice cream that with it isn't all smeared all over. I'm gonna and that's go why. In the middle of these two, and I'm just gonna jump in here. Uh, so, 
Uh, there is some things that you do have to let bloom overnight, and it does alter and change the flavor. An example, when you work with a stand from Green Mountain Flavoring, he has um, some formulas that you do have to make in advance, let it sit overnight before you have the optimum flavor. So yes and no. Um, I can tell you that lavender chocolate chip doesn't taste the same as it does the next day. I prefer it fresh versus the next day because it is stronger when it first comes out to me. Uh, Steve obviously thinks differently. Um, and then of course I am with Jeff. Vanilla is vanilla whether it comes out of the machine now or you have it set tomorrow. Uh, chocolate chip is going to taste like chocolate chip today and it's going to taste like chocolate chip tomorrow. So I'm in the middle of both of them. So Jack Lemon and Walter Math, all oh, there you go. Do your own taste test and then let me know. Uh, let me know, uh, Steve at emerythompson.com, uh, yes. which reminds oh, me, uh, Christy and I do something called Questions Answered every Wednesday. It's 10 minutes long. Uh, she has three questions that people have asked. Uh, I have three, and we get it done very quickly. We ask you, send in your questions, uh, because people like to hear what other people are doing, and we'll answer those questions every, uh, every Wednesday when we sit up here and, and do that. We're going to take a 10 minute break while we reset. If you want to get up and walk around, um, there's bathrooms right here, there's water over there, uh, we have coffee here. Uh, help yourself, stretch your legs, and then we'll come back and have more fun. Awesome. Thank you. Oh.